Welcome to the joy of coding. Welcome, everybody, to episode 36 of The Joy of Coding. I'm Mike Conley. As usual, we're going to be hacking on Firefox desktop today. And that's what's up. That's what's for lunch or dinner or breakfast, depending on whereabouts you are in the world right now. Uh, let's check out the agenda. Boop. Here's my screen. Here's today's agenda. And if you're new here, if you're not familiar uh, with this agenda thing, this is kind of my sort of plan for what I kind of want the episode to be like, although a reminder that no plan survives breakfast and anything can go wrong at any time, and that's okay. Uh, but if you want to follow along, click on the links, etc., etc., there should be an additional links tab below in this video that you're watching on Air Mozilla. If you're on YouTube, it might be in the description, or it might be in the comments. I don't know where I'll put it on YouTube. If it's on my blog, it will hopefully be somewhere around this video. Uh, any case, in any case, there's hopefully a link nearby to take you to th this agenda, and you can click on these notes and stuff on these links that I've put in. So what did I want to start with? Uh, I wanted to quickly uh, talk about something I'd started to do last week. I was investigating a performance problem where we noticed that like opening up a tab, well, just like holding Control T or Command T in Firefox was like the performance had regressed. And I didn't end up getting too, too far there uh, because I wasn't able to reproduce it on my local machine, like here in, on OS X. But I was able to reproduce it away from, like, the episode of last, last week. Like, as soon as the episode finished, I went back to my desk, I booted up my Windows machine, I got out the right change sets, I built them, and then I was able to reproduce them on my Windows machine. But I can't stream my Windows machine um, because I don't want to have to, like... I don't want to do this sort of setup at my desk. My Windows machine is this big blocky box, and I'm surrounded by other people who probably don't want to hear me yakking and yammering. That's why, like, whenever I do these streams, I, I kind of isolate myself. I'm out here in the in the community space of the Toronto office now, and sometimes I'm in like a, a another room or something, just so that other people who are wanting to concentrate don't have to hear me yakking and yakking. And so uh, that's why I'm having a, a hard time sort of showing you that work. And I was able to reproduce it, but I wasn't able to really figure out what's going on except that I can validate what Avi was seeing. Uh, if you'd been following along with that video, Avi uh, had a comment about how we saw uh, fewer uh, event handlers being run for the command T being held down. And I was able to confirm that. Like in the Zool case, we were running the event handler fewer times than in the XHTML case. And so I have currently need info our resident Zool expert, XBL and Zool expert, uh, it's Neil Deacon, uh, on the bug to ask him if there's some kind of gating that takes place uh, or whenever we're, like, when many, many uh, event handlers are coming in. Because, like, I've... I sort of did some instrumentation, and I found that, yes, the Gecko main process is receiving these native events, but they're, like, only a small set of them are actually being dispatched to Zool event handlers, and I don't know why that is. I don't know where in that big mess of stuff what decides what gets dispatched and what doesn't get dispatched, so I've, I've need info Neil Deacon, and hopefully... Uh, we can sort of drill in there um, once once that gets sorted out. Um, so I've put that aside. I originally was going to work on performance stuff, but that's not going to happen. So instead, I'm going to hopefully fix a regression that I landed a couple of days ago, um, where you may have seen this where um, if you... Well, here, let me open the uh, the bug. I'm not going to go into too much detail about why this occurs, really, unless I end up having to in the course of landing this thing. But uh, suffice to say that you could get into a state where when you attempted to restore your session, um, if you'd, like, closed... Suppose you closed your session with Command-Q or, or Control or Alt-F. Like, suppose you quit the browser and you had multiple windows open. Um, and... How do I explain this? If you quit the browser, multiple windows open, uh, we could get into a state where 
your final two windows, like your last window, would be duplicated if you attempted to restore the state and the next browser open. Um, there was like a small window of opportunity. There was a race where that could occur. And uh, I have got a patch here. It landed last night and then bounced due to a test failure uh, to a legitimate problem with the patch, which I have since fixed and pushed to try. And let's see if, let's see how that try build's doing. Urgh. Oh, these are just, these are inter intermittents that sometimes occur. Uh, so I have a feeling these are not my problem. But I'll re-trigger them nonetheless, just to be just to be sure. Actually, you know what I'll do? Because um, the rest of these seem to be okay. Uh, what Bill, uh, who's my reviewer, later asked for was a, a regression test for this, which I have written. Uh, I just recently, before this video started, I wrote a regression test. And it's always good, because we should definitely catch this. This should not happen again. Um, and I built it on top of some previous tests that I had written for async window flushing. Um, but those tests had never landed because there was a problem with them. But I think I figured out the problem. They were, like, the tests were failing intermittently, and so that they didn't land. But I think I found out why they were failing intermittently. And that's because of, where is it? Here's the test as it stands now, uh, and I'll show you the way the tests were before. Let me see. Uh, rip. Let me show you the old tests. Whoop. It's kind of a circuitous path to get to the old patch that I had posted. But um, here, I had added this pref to make it so that we don't hear from the content process about like session updates from the remote browsers. Uh, we can make we can like flip this pref, and then we'll ignore updates from the content process. And that's good because sometimes we want to simulate that window of time where we haven't received an update from the content process, um, and like control it manually so that we can. We, we can control that pocket of time, make it as long or short as we want, run code in that pocket of time where something has happened in the content process, but we haven't yet heard about it. So I added this pref to, uh, to control that using this no auto updates pref thing. But my test wasn't working, and I didn't know why, even though like I like there was this race that seemed to be occurring uh, where we were sometimes getting an update to the parent, sometimes we weren't. And I'd... I'd been flipping the pref, and I'm like, well, why isn't this pref working? And I realized this push prefs thing that I had added uses uh, push prefs test uses inside session store. Yeah, here push prefs is this uh, asynchronous preference pusher that makes sure that uh, the preference has been sent down to the content process, I believe, as well as the parent. Um, so that everyone is in sync in terms of the pref having been written, but also it, uh, whenever the test finishes, it resets the pref, and then it will resolve when all that's when all that's done. What I forgot was that that that's also true whenever a task finishes. So this pref was being pushed and then popped immediately because the task was finishing. This little setup script was uh, wasn't doing the right thing. So instead, I have to move this no auto updates pref push into the top of both of my tests here, which I've done, and that appears to be working. And then I added my new test here. And when I ran them locally, uh, with like multiple repeats, I ran them with run until failure, they passed. So what we've got here now is, uh, I've got, I had to like fix a thing in the test. What I've got here now is a potential regression test and the old window flush test that should have landed before. So now I've got three patches in total. I've got the old async window flushing test that I believe I've fixed. Then I've got the fix for the you know the re restore at opening two windows thing. And then I've got a regression test for the restore two windows thing, which is built on top of the async window flushing tests. So I think we're good. Um, so I'm going to push these to try now, and if they're like green, and I do a bunch of re-triggers, and they stay green. I think we're in good shape. So the next step is to push all of this stuff to try. Um, so uh, let's see. 
Let's push to try. Uh, push to try. And then I have to do it like... I have to run all of the uh, Moki tests because I don't currently have control over individual tests. Whoops, I didn't want that page. I wanted... Where's try chooser? Pretty sure I have try chooser somewhere in... Uh, there we go, that's what I wanted. Okay, let's do debug both. Let's do both uh, debug and non-debug. We'll do Linux ASAN, Linux 64, and Mac OS X, and we'll run all the Moki tests. And we'll push to try. And then, if this works, well, we'll know maybe by the end of this episode, we'll be able to take a look and, and see if all of our tests are passing. So we'll come back to this later. Imagine this is like a cooking show where, okay, we're going to put this in the oven, and we're going to check on this later. That's exactly what's happening. We are putting this try push in the oven. Baking a cake. How come my sounds aren't working? I'm triggering sounds. I, I was about to play a funny sound. Here, let's try this again. I probably lost my network connection on... What happened? Why is it not working? Am I not running this server? Did my IP change? It's important that we get these sounds. Hold on, let me figure this out. This is, I know, this is critically important. Um, it's my IP address. <laughs> That's right. I'm connecting to the right machine. Listening on port 3000. Do it. Or is it this thing not connected to the right? One moment. Normally I'd play... Oh, I can actually. I can play a sound effect locally while you wait for me. Uh, there. Huh. Well, I can't solve this mystery. I guess we're having no sounds today, or at least I'll be triggering them from this tab. Oh. All right, so let's keep moving. Let's not get blocked up. So we've pushed this stuff, and we've got a try push here. So I'm going to add this to my notes about the bug. Try push with tests. And I should make a note of it in here. I've been able to, I think, I've figured out the um, intermittent test failures for bug 1226333, which exercises our async window closing stuff. I've added a test case on top of them for this particular bug. I've pushed them to try. So. We are blocked on try. Try build. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna come back and check that out uh, later in this episode and see how we did. So maybe I should put that in my notes here. Uh, check out the try build. Whoop whoop. There we go. 
so the next thing is, so I've done this, this restore previous session duplicate window thing I've got to test for now. Uh, so now we're talking about stop using compiles on application shutdown. So this is very similar to the uh, window closing thing. Like they're kind of all interrelated, but it actually, uh, it's slightly separate. So when the application shuts down, what we're doing is we're closing all of the windows, but we're going to remember them as having been opened. Like when you close a window when the application is not shutting down, session store goes, oh, this user has closed the window. Like they have actually like physically said this window should be closed. And then it goes into this closed windows array so that you can restore it later if you had accidentally closed it. But when you quit the application, when the windows start closing, session store is in this special state where it goes, oh, these closed windows? There, we're, we're shutting down, so um, these windows shouldn't go into the closed windows array. I'm going to remember them as the windows that were open when the user decided to quit. And we need to flush the state in those windows. We need to make sure that all of the, the state in those browsers, uh, those remote browsers, have, they've sent up all their messages so that we don't lose any information. Um, while we're quitting. And we currently do that using synchronous messages and kapows, and we need to get rid of that. We need to get rid of those kapows. Um, that's important because you, there is an opportunity for us to get into a deadlock uh, whenever you use kapows from the parent, and so that's why we've been actively trying to remove kapows. That's why window closing kapows, like window removing the window closing kapow was an M8. That's why this is an M8, um, because we don't want to hit those potential deadlocks. And these would be the final major deadlock, uh, kapow usages left in the main browser code. These are the last two, pretty much. There are like some gesture ones, but there, I think there's a fix for them that's already R plus. So this is the, we're we're down to our last major kapows here, and that's good. So the solution is to, um, well, I'll show you what I've got. Uh, first of all, though, I'm going to rebase the changes that I've got so far on top of all the stuff I've just done. So first, I'm going to move the bookmark for the closed window fix, the like the restore multiple windows fix. I'm going to move the bookmark up to include the regression test. And then I'm going to rebase the app shutdown, the uh, not non kapow app shutdown work I've been doing on top of this. Now I've also got this async window experiments branch. This is where I was doing like a lot of, uh, I've got my summary here of meandering wildly. This is where I was doing a lot of experimentation. Um, and uh, a lot of it is really a lot of throwaway code just to test certain ideas. And now I'm starting to break it up into these individual patches of how I want this to be, how I want this patch, like how, how I want this bug to be fixed. And so some of this is still sort of useful as reference, but this is where the actual work is happening on inside this branch, the or on this sort of head, the async app shutdown head. So I'm going to bring both of these over because they're still both useful. Um, so let's see. I want to rebase all of this. Yeah, all of this to the tip. So hg rebase uh, b means it'll rebase everything from the shared ancestor. Um, from the shared ancestor to the revision I give uh, to wherever I choose. So I'm going to say the, the, from the base of async app shutdown to tip. And I believe that's going to take async window experiments with it. So, and I might hit some conflicts here, but hey, that's, that's how joy of coding works, is sometimes we hit merge conflicts and we have to deal with it. Hey, all right, now my sounds should be working again because for some reason this thing... Here we go! Yay! Yay. So I can close this tab over here. Hey, that worked without a conflict. That's good. So, right, I've replayed those changes on top of my closed window fix. And here are my experiments. Here's what I've got so far. So I'm actually doing, I think, most of the work already inside this this patch uh, or this one here yeah uh, async app shutdown so I'm gonna update to the tip and show you what it does okay so here's the code that matters 
on quit application granted. So whenever the user has said, yes, I'm actually going to quit the browser, um, and so we know we are going to quit. It's not like the user, something can say, no, it's not going to happen. Like nothing can cancel the quit. It's we are shutting down. Whenever that occurs, um, the first thing we do is we collect the window data just to make sure that um, any anything that's like, uh, we basically collect all of the locally cached stuff in the parent just in case. And then we're going to uh, start flushing each individual uh, window. Um, and that happens down here inside an async shutdown blocker. So we have this thing called async shutdown, and what it does is it's going to spin the event loop, which is terrible, but we still do it because we can, it's actually, it's designed in a very nice way where you can have these async tasks that block shutdown, um, and then they can like report progress to this logging mechanism. And if we re, if the async shutdown notices that shutdown is taking longer than it should, it will just kill the process. It'll just kill the browser so that the user isn't stuck around with a, a browser just taking resources. Um, this also allows us to do asynchronous things like send flush requests to the child and wait to hear from, the from them, wait to hear the responses back. So that's what we're using, this async shutdown uh, library. Uh, we're blocking on quit application granted. Um, Right, so this is where we do the work, right here. Uh, so we flush all the windows. We go through the windows, and we collect their window data. Um, you know what? I just realized now that because we're doing this, we don't need to do this. I don't think we need to do this at all. Because we were doing this. So then what we do is we flush the window, or we send a flush request, but then we close the window immediately so that the user can't like change the state of the window. Um, we don't want the user to be able to change the state of the window after we've collected information about the window because that state's not going to be safe so we close it immediately um, and because we're at this point in uh, application shutdown the um, the run state will have changed the session store run state will have changed to no longer running and that means our on close handler for um, for windows is not going to run like all the async window flushing stuff is not going to run because uh, on close uh, where's on close? Hup, hup. Here, on close, checks to make sure that the run state is running. Uh, so not it's not happening during shutdown. Um, and uh, and so that's that's why we avoid doing multiple like layers of flushes, or how we avoid it, anyways. Okay. So then we close the window without running the on close flush thing inside of it, but we flush out here, and then we wait for that flush to complete. And that flush is going to uh, update the session store data, and then when the pending flushes are done, um, because we all I've also added um, uh, a, mem a function to tab state flusher which keeps a record of all of the flash flushes in play, not just the ones that we did in here, but any flushes that were still in flight before the user decided to quit. And we wait until all those are done as well. Um, and then we are done. Then we stop blocking and the application can continue to quit. And we do, after on quit application granted is on quit application, that actually happens down here. And during this uninit bit, uh, whenever we call uninit is when the last uh, session write occurs. And so that will happen after all of this has occurred, which means it should have all the up-to-date browser information. Is the goal, is the, is the hope. So this is where I'm at, and I've, I've kind of, I've written this stuff, but I don't know, like I've sort of been testing it as I go, but I've also been like porting a lot of this experimental stuff into these individual uh, patches, and I don't actually know. Like, just now I, I made that correction where I'm pretty sure I don't need to do this anymore, so I'm, I'm going to get rid of it. Um, 
And so let's make sure it works. That's where we're at. So I'm going to build just to make sure uh, I've got everything I need. Uh, because I'm one of these patches, this one here from Yorick, it does it changes something in the binary layer. So, um, so that's why I'm building not just faster, but yeah, I had to build the binaries as well. And what time is it? It's 1.25. We're in good shape. Uh, something I want to point out, if you have any questions about what I'm doing, if anything in here is confusing or you want to like talk to me at all while I'm live hacking, you can because I'm in IRC. I hang out in IRC on the irc.mozilla.org server. Uh, I'm in the hash live hacking channel and you can talk to me in there. There are a number of us in there. Mostly people just kind of hang out. No one really says anything. But um, but if you want to talk to me, if there's anything you want to know, or if you have any suggestions, maybe you see a bug that I don't, uh, or maybe you something's not clear and, and you want and sort of a further explanation, you can ping me in IRC and talk to me, and I'll do my best to try and like answer your question if you have one, or if you spot a bug or have a solution, I'll try your solution maybe, or we'll talk about your solution. So this is this is interactive. We've got some interactive hacking here. Is the idea. Whoops. Okay, so what's the next step in this master plan? Um, now that I've got this thing built, uh, I don't actually think I want to do this one anymore. I had this idea where we could like, I had to remove a test that was um, exercise. So. I moved the async flushing stuff, or the the window, the sync flushing stuff, uh, from the on quit application requested observer notification handler to this on quit application granted handler, and we had a test that exercised that stuff inside the requested handler because that one's easier to test, um, but that also meant that we would be, we were blocking on showing certain things. Now, like, it's possible that we might want to, um, what am I trying to say? What am I trying to say? I've moved the flushing of windows to later in the process, later in the shutdown process, and there was a test that exercised some of that shut shutdown stuff, um, which was easier because it was occurring earlier in the process where it was still cancelable. But now I've moved it to later where it'll be uh, less time for the user to interact with the browser, but it makes it harder to test, at least with the current framework we've got. Uh, and I had this thing where I had a potential solution, but I've thought about it, and I don't actually think I want to do this anymore. Uh, the async shutdown code is in there. Uh, I've turned out turns out that we want to do this. Close immediately away for the flush to complete. We're doing that, and then look at the shutdown test. So here's the other thing that I wanted to potentially look at today. Testing this sort of thing is hard. Testing shutdown, like full browser shutdown, is hard because our testing framework, Moki Test, um, that like I'd normally use for for testing, it runs inside the browser. And so if you shut down the browser, Moki Test goes away, and like the test handler will say, "Oh, the browser shut down. Whoops." Um, and so that's not good. I want to be able to test the browser process shutting down and then starting up to see whether or not like the application shutdown logic saved things properly. And so there's like this uh, this patch that was started by Tim Taubert to uh, use a new testing framework called Marionette, which should allow for uh, restart restartable tests or restart tests where the browser whole browser shuts down and can start again. Um, and he pointed me at it as a potential way of like setting up or testing some like um, uh, testing some uh, some of these paths so maybe I can salvage some of this stuff maybe I can use it uh, and then and then we can like actually feel confident and have some tests here because the shutdown the sh shutdown path isn't well tested so let's let's well let's read this through but as we're doing that let's do a quick smoke test. Uh, let's run 
or let's run our automated test. We'll not do smoke test. Let's run our automated tests without E10S. Let's just see what goes on. Now, unfortunately, this is going to cause the browser to flash around in the window a lot. So what am I going to do about that? I might move the... What I'm going to do is I'm going to shrink my reading. Like, the browser will be flashing over here. Hopefully, I can, like, read this stuff over here. Um, and that way, we can do both at the same time without blocking the tests. So let's run those tests and see what happens. In the meantime, here is what is up. So you can add a marionette test to session store. And so you add like a marionette manifest and... Already these tests aren't running properly. Tab state flusher flush is undefined. Okay, hey, we've got our first bug. Because <laughs> there's something wrong with tab state flusher. I probably have a typo or some kind of... Like, the fact that it's undefined suggests to me that, like, the JSM wasn't properly parsed because I've got, like, a an error in it. Um... So let's try and import it and see what happens. Flusher. Here. Whoop. See you down, import. Hoip. Hey. Sure, it's, it's defined. What you talking about? It's defined. What's your problem? So what I'm going to do then is open the JS debugger so that any errors will, like that occur during the test, will hopefully I'll get a little more context inside the JS debugger. Maybe I can inspect some things. All right. Tab state flush or flush is undefined, and that's occurring here. Tab state flusher flush is undefined. Have I changed? No, it's right here. So, what's the deal? Like, if I Hmm. Hmm. That's mysterious. So what I'm going to do, now that I know where the problem is, is I'll set a breakpoint. Maybe I can examine it. This is very mysterious. Session store.jsm. Tab state flusher.flush. Here's where it was. But any any place where we call into stat, tab state flusher, I'm going to uh, OK, so let's run. So now can we take a look at tab state flusher? Exception. Tab state flusher flush is undefined, but that's not true. I just. Oh, maybe the flush itself is returning undefined is what's happening, not the function itself. Ah, uh, you know what? Flush is supposed to return a thing, and I'll bet you I'm not returning a thing. Return the flush promise. That's what I need to do. And the same thing goes for this. Return the flush promise. I have to return things. Yeah, that's what's going on. Browser components. Build faster. Mock build faster. So, I had a problem in my patches. 
during my whole like experimental extraction thing that uh, that's the problem there. So that we we smoked that one out. We smoke them out. So let's uh, let's run these tests again. What am I trying to do here? HG no mock monkey test browser components test. Now will you run? Hey, and we're running. We are off to the races. Meanwhile, uh, I will keep reading this. So hopefully you can read this stuff too. Uh, well, hopefully we don't get too many more of those like window zoom things. Um, so add iteration task sounds a lot like add task. We, so we can probably like reuse a lot of this stuff. What's add iteration task though? Is that something that head gives us? No? It seems to be something we get for free, I guess. Unless I'm mistaken. Add iteration. Oh, here it is. Yeah, we have to... So we're kind of doing our own homebrew add task thing. Not amazing, but okay. Tabs, wait until browser's loaded. So luckily we can like Im import this stuff and we can probably import the browser test utils as well. I'd be very interested in finding out whether or not this works. I've never written or run a marionette test locally in my life, ever. So this is very interesting. Add iteration task. Shut down. So how does, how does this work? Like when does it start up again? This would be my... Uh, maybe iteration task is... Hey, these all passed. Now how about with E10S? Add iteration task. How does that work? Then finish with new profile or finish with new profile. So it'll run some stuff and then we'll do finish with new profile, which I don't know what that is. I think that might be. So there are a current set of things. There are things that I believe that Marionette will give us that uh, are just available globally to us and finish with new profile might be one of them. Um, Can quit, restart, shut down. Perhaps it's true. QMUs, we don't test B2G, I understand. So, what are these current set of tests? I wonder why they didn't land. Like, we should probably figure out what prevented all this stuff from landing because it looks pretty good. So, there must have been something wrong with them. I wonder what they are. Maybe we can fix them up, and then we can get like our full-blown um, like application shutdown and startup stuff written as well. Because man, getting some session store tests where we shut down the browser and start up again, that'd be good stuff. Manifest any. All right, so what I, what do I want to do next? Well, I want to wait for this test to finish, and then I, those fixes I put into the tab state flusher, uh, I need to merge them into a previous patch, then evolve forward um, so that they're in the right spot. Yay, all passed. That's good. So... I think my changes need to go here. So I'm going to shelve what I just did. And then update to 313084. Well, you know what? I'll make sure. 313083 shouldn't 
that should be returning yeah it's returning the promises still so it's the next one where I made the mistake of not returning the promises yes and now I will unshelve to take the thing that I had it's like git stash if you've ever used git stash and there are conflicts so what are the conflicts <sighs> it changes in session store.jsm uh, is there unshelve abort yes good okay so i need to un i need to shelve particular things um so unshelve okay so what are the changes that i had made i should have checked this first yeah i made this change to session store which uh i should probably commit that here so commit so I'm going to shelve the tab state flusher things. Whoop. So here, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to shelve the com the change in tab state flusher. And so we should just have this one session store fix, which I'll commit here. Amend. And now I will go back to here, 313084. Now, we'll unshelve. So, no conflict. So, now I need to make my changes on here and then rebase this on top. So, I will do commit. Um, well, let's take a look, make sure that the diff is what I want it to be. Yes, we want to return those promises, commit, amend, and then evolve. Here we go! Hey! All right. Um, so, we got out of our little mercurial mess there. That's good. Uh, what did I want to do now? So our tests all pass. That's great. Um, so, but our automated tests, like I said, don't really cover the application shutdown thing very well. So let's maybe do some manual testing to see what we think. So here we go with some manual testing. I've got a bunch of tabs open here. Uh, ooh, Microsoft Surface stuff. I've got like my blog in the back here. Okay, now I'm going to open and I'm going to move this to a new tab or I'll move this to a new window and then shut down the browser immediately. Like as soon as the window opens, I'm going to shut down the browser so that that tab should not have had enough time to send a message up to the parent. Um, and then I believe, well, I could always flip that pref that causes us to ignore automated messages that I added in that one test. But for now, I'm just going to do the quickie. I'm going to do the fast. So move to new window and then shut down. So we've shut down. And now let's restore. Do we have two windows? We do. Does this window know where to go? It does. So I think that's that's good. That's a good state to be in. Um, ooh, that's... That's a fun bug. I've seen this one before, where like we leave the little widgety thing around. I've never been able to reproduce it reliably, but there it was. Let me see if I can do it again. See? Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Move to new window. I'm trying not to get too distracted here, but... I'll probably I'll end up watching uh, watching the uh, watching this video again just to see how I did that because I wasn't really paying attention. But all right, um, that worked. So let's try something else. Let's try opening a new window, closing it, and then shutting down the browser. So move to window, close, shut down the browser. So we should not have my blog in a tab. So that's good. We don't. And do we have? 
Yes, we do. We have it here in the recently closed windows. That's good. We seem to be working. But what would be great is if we get those automated tests working. Um, but for now, what I should do is probably post these changes up uh, on review board so that people can take a look at them, just like temporarily. Um, now here's the thing. This, I think I want to just push this to this. Push our 313080 all the way to tip to review. Not the meandering wildly bit. I don't think I actually need that anymore. I could probably prune these, actually. I don't think there's anything in here. I should probably check, but I don't think there's anything in here that uh, that I need anymore. I think there's a bunch of logging and stuff. Oh, it doesn't like the fact that there are two heads here. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to prune these. Prune it. Whoops, whoops, whoops. Okay, so now we have a straight line. Good. Now we should be able to push 313080. Uh, that should not have that bookmark anymore. Uh, so I'm going to get rid of that bookmark. Sync window. Because when I pruned, what happened was when I pruned, uh, you can't see where I'm pointing. So I had two change sets on here, and the end of it had a bookmark. And then when I pruned them, that bookmark moved to the, the like the ancestor, the first ancestor that wasn't pruned, and that was this one. And I don't need that bookmark anymore, actually. So I've removed the bookmark. Because I don't think you have book. You can't have bookmarks, or you shouldn't have bookmarks on pruned change sets, because you're not supposed to be able to see them by default. Something like that. So now I'm going to push from here to here to review. Push our 313080 to tip to review. And now, while uh, that's pushing, oh, here it goes. Uh, I want to get this thing locally landed, if I can. I might have to... It's been a while since... This was back in 2013, so it's possible that all of this is just busted. Um, like, it's the hottest thing. Soon will be... We should add tests for recent bugs that have been fixed, but we couldn't write tests for so far. So some of the stuff in here might not work anymore, and maybe now is a good time to investigate. So we can apply this patch and find out. Um, I don't want to push these to review, or publish them for review just yet, because I want to remove the reviewers, because these are WIP patches. Mm, gonna get remove these reviewers. Uh, with patches, and then publish. Some of this might be reviewable right now. Um, let's take a look at this one. Yeah, that's how that one works. And he had some concerns here. Be sure to ask for um, Tim Taubert confirmation on this, so I'm going to do that. So I fixed this issue because uh, now we close the windows uh, while the while. We're after we've done a uh, while, well, like we flush the window, then we close the window, and then we wait for the flush to finish. Uh, 
Okay. And then I need to ask Tim Talbert if this is okay. Uh, I wonder if he's in IRC right now. I'm gonna. What I'm gonna do is feedback question mark him on it. Feedback question mark Tim Talbert. Hey Tim. Do you see any, do you foresee any problems with us waiting until quit application granted to do, to add an async shutdown and flush each window? We close each window right after requesting the flush, so the user shouldn't be able to manipulate the state, change the state in the pocket of time between the start and end of the flush. Also note that um, because quit application granted, because the quit application granted blocker is added dynamically in on quit application granted by the time that Uh, on quit application granted by the time that flush all windows async starts running uh, run state should is running should be false so we won't end up running the on close window flush for each closing window How does this that sound? So, feedback requested. Great. Now let's take a look at this uh, marionette tests. This was way back in the day. I mean, this was last updated in 2014, June 19th. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and apply it and see what happens. I'm not hopeful, but who knows? Yay, some of it worked, uh, but some of it did not. So the part that did not work um, unit test.ini and then unit test.ini.reg. So this bit wasn't added properly. Probably because other stuff that, oh, layout tests, loop tests. Session store tests. All right. Um, so that's good. That was a lot easier to apply. I guess it's it's not so surprising because most of this patch was new files. Um, this was the only one that I think was modified. So I guess that's not so surprising. Bug. Uh, marionette-based session store tests to exercise application shutdown and restart. Poor Bill M. I just shower that guy in review requests. I'm not sure if he's the right choice. Maybe Tim Talbert's the right choice there. But let's see what we can do here. Like, can we even run these? Uh, how would we know? I might have to build first. I might have to build session store um, so that our 
Okay. I w I'm surprised. I'm surprised it didn't have to reticulate spelines because of this change, but all right. Oh, I guess I didn't change a Moz build. I changed the unit test.ini. I added a manifest.ini here. Well, I think normally anytime I, I modify like a browser.ini, I have to reticulate splines, but I guess maybe marionette sidesteps that somehow. Uh, so how do I run a marionette test? Let's ask Mock. Uh, do marionette, marionette testing, testing, marionette test, run a marionette test. So I just do marionette test, and then I probably give it a path. So mock marionette test, browser component session store test, marionette. Let's see what you do. What's going to happen? It's opening a browser. Nothing. It's something. <laughs> Nothing happened. Okay, so that's that's interesting. Um, the marionette test driver failed out while we were waiting for something. I think we were waiting inside something. And we were trying to run this test. Test deferred session. Dot js. So maybe this one test is just no good. What does it do? It attempts to... run this, task spawn, then finish with new profile. So did it do any of these checks? I, I can't tell. Sweet. Start main thread six test start test deferred session. Um, I guess I could like log all up in here. Um, all right. Is there also are there things I can pass to Marionette test that might help me know what's going on? Define the pass if the log is very, if his file be maybe pass to write standard out dash maybe pass so like what if I do gecko dash log dash oh defaults to gecko dot log do I have a gecko log I do so here's what Marionette was trying to do loaded listener dot js accepted So this is the the tests attempting to start. And then and then nothing happens. It just kind of waits. I guess it's maybe waiting for this to do something. Um let me see if there's has Add task path marionette. Has anyone ever done an add task inside marionette? No. How about task in general? Marionette. Dispatcher. Interesting. This is... It's out of sync. Looking for... No, I don't think that helps as much. So I don't think anyone's ever done... Oh, we've got like this test functions thing. So other people have tried to basically solve the same problem. <sighs> okay. And we have a log function, it looks like. Let's see if I can make use of that. So what was the test name? It was called test deferred session. And then there was also uh, under component session store marionette, I had head.js. These are the two, these are the two big ones. So I'm going to see if this gets entered. 
Log? Is that thing I have in here? Log? Hello? Add iteration task? I don't even know if that's going to work. Um, return function add iteration task. nor equals iteration. What's iteration? Marionette params log iteration if ignore equals zero dash dash ignore if we don't ignore. Alright. Uh, let's see if that does anything. I don't know. Uh, what was this one called? Test deferred session. Don't need help. Actually, I do need help, but let's see. Two string called on an object does not implement. Oh, doesn't like lots of stuff. To string call on object that does not implement interface exception. Full stack. Error is error. Inside loader. I don't know where my problem is. A window is null inside view I tour. Okay, why are we trying to use UI tour? Uh, can't convert undefined object is some kind of message here. I wish I knew in line 26. So maybe it doesn't like this. Marionette params. Where is marionette params? Is that even still used anymore? Okay, it is. For some things. So what if... Iteration... What if I get rid of that? If what's gonna make this go? If ignore, I'm just gonna say like just do it. I'm gonna get rid of some stuff. I don't even know what that other stuff was for. All right, let's see what it now happens. Iteration is not defined because of my silly logging, of course. Finish with new profile is not defined. Interesting. So did this ever exist? No. But at the time that at the time that uh, Tim wrote this stuff was back in was back in 2013 November. No, yeah, November the 20th. So let's take a look at the tree at that date. Mozilla Central, 2013, November 20th. Nope, that's not what I needed to do. How about date? Is that what you want? <sighs> um, summary. How do I fi figure out? How do I like go to a particular date? From Maybe it's from. HG Web. <laughs> Whoops. HG Web search query. HG Web search. Like, 
Or is there like, um, I think I've seen things like from change and then from date, from hg.mozilla.org, from, from change, and then I've seen as well from here, from change. I can use like change set IDs, but I need like dates. Uh, how about date? Yeah, start date and then end date. So what if I give that to you, start date? Something's happening. Mercurial's thinking about it. Alternatively, I could ask push log. Push log. That's probably way better. From 2015, no, 13, uh, November the, what day was it? November the 20th to 2013, November the 20th is fine. I just want to know what happened that day. I just want like a change, any change will do. Sure, perfect. And now let's browse the tree here, files. So this search I don't need anymore. That wasn't gonna go anywhere, but I can look inside testing marionette. Did you have something called, um, what was it called, finish with new profile? How would I know? Ah, <sighs> wish I could search the code from here. DXR doesn't let me like search a particular revision, I don't think. Um, it's not indexing by revision, it indexes the current snapshot unless, revision, 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 revision. No. What about GitHub's Gecko Dev? Um, Mozilla Gecko Dev. Well, let me do that. So, commits. Uh, oh, I need to go back, way back in time. How do I do that, GitHub? Uh, GitHub show commits years ago. No. It's from long ago. F. Ah, if you anyone here watching this knows how to do it. I need to like go way back in time. I need like a history slider. Um Is the, will this new design have it? Nope. I need to like go way back in the day. Um, ah. <sighs> um, so I, let's search around. Marionette component finish with new profile. Like, just so I'm sure, it wasn't like in here somewhere, was it? No, it wasn't. And did this depend on anything? Depends on starting in safe mode, shut down restart tests. Maybe that is where it was added. Oh, wow, this is This is really recent. Finish with new profile, and then what are these? Special test given by Marionette test restart. Okay, time to ask for help.
Time to ask for help. Join Marionette. Is that a thing that we have? Nope. Leave. I was going to ask Automated Tester. Um, who would that be under? A-Team? A-Team, A-Team, A-Team. A-Team, join. A-Team. Where's A-Team? Do I have them in here already? A-Team. Automated Tester. AFK. Shoot. Anybody in here really savvy at Marionette? And willing to talk to me while I stream. To chat with me here while I stream. Okay, I should probably have asked that privately just in case there are people who don't want to chat with me live but do have the information. How do I search this? You know what I could do? Do I have a clone of... Do I have a Calm Central clone that has... How old is this? December 29th. Hey, 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 all right. I have another tree. ATO and I are the savviest, says Ahal. Okay. This is good though. I can, before I ask, what was that change? It was this one, I think. See, this is good. I didn't want to do this to my local tree because that would like end up touching the entire file system tree and then like any other builds would be kind of slow binary builds anyways okay so now I can grep for uh, finish with new profile Thirteen, but never landed in the tree. It looks like marionette. Well, replace them. I'm asking for help. Um, Yeah, I'm asking for help inside uh, the A-Team channel, and if someone wants to go on the record. So that's taking too long. How about testing Marionette? New profile. Wow, that's, that's really taking too long. Finish with new profile. Whoop. No good. You run mock deck to see the current documentation. I was also looking to try to find the old documentation so that what this test was trying to do. So that's interesting. I couldn't find finish with new profile. So what is that? <laughs> what even is? Was it depending on something that introduced it? That hadn't landed at the time? No. Otherwise, yeah, one of those two guys, your best father, I don't know if I might know it. Do you remember a function being available to marionette tests? Uh, 
Okay. So finish with new profile. It's just not available. It's just not available. So what 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 is the, maybe we should read what Marionette the docs for Marionette are right now in terms of restarting restartable tests. We actually don't maintain that at all. It's the BTG Automation folks who wrote that. You can find them in FX OS Automation. Cool, thanks. Any JS marionette savvy hackers in here? I have questions. Specifically, if there are examples of specifically there was ever a function called available to JS Marionette tests as I'm attempting to port uh, to forward port a Marionette test that was in a patch on Bugzilla but never landed and it was posted way back in 2013 so I'm trying to figure everything it was doing. So I'm trying to figure out what it was doing since the API has changed so much. Has changed. So Marionette JavaScript tests, Marionette JavaScript tools. Test structure. All Marionette JavaScript web API tests are asynchronous and will not complete until the test call is finished. Is that still being respected in here? Maybe that's what I need to do. Finish. This is what I get. Wait for, get logs, log, finish ends the test. So let's see what that does. Doesn't like it. Oh, oh, three things passed. Other things failed. False is false, expected true. Can restore last session in here. I don't know why. Test first session. We start with a single tab. One should equal one. Done. And then can restore last session. False is false, expected true. So which one was it trying to run? Oh, these are all like dependent on one another. This runs, then this shuts down, then this runs, and this shut. Oh shoot! Okay, I see. So that's why this ignore stuff was added in here. Iteration. So what are these marionette params? Let's see if we can log those out. Let's see what was trying we were trying to do here. I don't think I actually need to do that. Okay, let's see what it thinks. Did it 
actually spit anything out. Parameters. Marionette params is what I wanted to say. It's nothing. There's nothing in there. It's an empty array. Okay. Uh, interesting. Marionette params. Marionette params, marionette params. Push. Interesting. Timer. Execute with call. It's used by execute async to execute JS script. To execute a script in a sandbox only when the finish method. Execute with callback. So, wait for, it calls the function past the test parameter until that function returns true, then calls callback. Okay. Say anything about like restart tests in here as well? Python tests. Hmm. Run to connect variant. Get a build, how to run it. Most of this is used for B2G. Uh, maybe this is going to be a pain in the butt. Maybe this is not worth it. But I think the idea is add iteration task is going to like. run a task. It should run. Spawn task. Task spawn. So it's actually trying to run this one. Running part three. So I think we want it to actually run in sequential order here. This is what this looks like. Running part one. And I would expect. This is painful. This is painful stuff. So running part one. Oh, so OK. It runs part one. And then it passes. So it actually does this. Uh, part one. Test pass. We start with single tab. And then it starts running part two. log yielding log returning from yield yielding so it never oh I see okay so what happens is as soon as we attempt to yield we start running the next one okay I wonder if that has something to do with task spawn, then finish, finish. Task spawn, task. So that should be these things. So you should run this. Yield, create tabs. So this should yield promises and tasks should 
do them. But we're not queuing them properly. So I wonder if we can, someone else added add task to like Moki test Chrome. I wonder if we could like crib some of that stuff. Oh boy, this is, where's add task? Spawn task. What is spawn task? Thunk to a product or an array. How does that even work? I didn't know about this library. This is cool. Thanks so much for a well-linked library. Like library like CO. Ultimate generator based flow control goodness for node. Using promises so that you can do this. Yield promises. Okay. Could we do something similar? I don't want to have to like write my own thing to do this. Um. Anyone else use like CO or spawn? Task. This seems to be sort of like a pattern. Tasks up push, tasks dot push, and then you call tasks dot next. Ugh. Ugh, this reminds me of like the old stuff. No. No. But I don't want to fix the world, so Tasks, how does this work? Task.next, task.finish. You push your tests, and then whenever your individual test is done, you call tasks.next. What does finish do? List of test functions. Each of them should call task.next when completed or tasks.finish to jump to the last one. This is horrible. I don't want to do, like, this is going to get us into callback hell again. I don't want that. Um, path, marionette. Is there anything that uses, like, yield? There's a copy of Macbeth in here? There's a copy... <laughs> There's a copy of Macbeth in the, in the tree. Flourish. Exunt. <laughs> There's a copy of Macbeth in the source tree. I don't know why, but all right. I don't think we have nice, like, testing stuff available for marionette. Grrr. So what are we going to do? 
It's 2.30 right now. What have we figured out? Oh, oh, okay. Well, here's... We we didn't get too far with this marionette business, because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call it. And that was frustrating. I'm going to file some bugs, see if we can make JS marionette tests easier to write, because that'd be great. Uh, maybe we could bring over some of that add task goodness. Um... We put this up, and we're, we're asking for feedback on it. This restore previous session thing, we can actually take a look at our try build, see how we're doing here. Rut row, we got some orange. These are intermittents, though, so it's okay. I think... Yes... This one is not okay. Shoot, here is the async window flushing bug, <laughs> which I thought I had fixed, but I didn't. We should have added the window to the closed windows array. So now we're f we're actually failing this first one, or no, we're still failing this one. Got zero, expected one. Shoot. Test 943. No. 72. Up in here. This one is failing now. Should add the window to the closed windows array. Window flush should have finished, so we should have paid attention to it. Shoot, okay, so I don't think I can... I think I'm going to have to just like add this one test to remove these other ones, just so I can land this test and get that restore thing fixed. These other two are just going to have to wait, which blows, but that's what I'm going to do. That's my plan, because we got to get that, uh, that bug fixed. Ah, okay. So, I am going to call it. Uh, is there anything else I want to talk about? Uh, you can subscribe to The Joy of Coding if you use iTunes or Kodi, which is, I guess, some sort of video streaming tool, which I've never used. But here's a URL that will give you a feed of The Joy of Coding and any other live hacking stuff, because we might get some other shows going, uh, from Air Mozilla. So check that out. I also want to point out that The Joy of Illustrating Episode 1 streamed a couple of week, uh, weeks ago, and it's really, really good. Sean Martell, head of, like, awesome art here at Mozilla, uh, was deconstructing the Firefox logo. And if that's interesting to you, you should check this out. Also, he's got a really, really awesome Eastern Canadian accent, and uh, I love listening to it. It's very soothing. Uh, if you're in the Mozilla community and you want to hack live hack on things, which you should, you should come talk to myself or Richard in the live hacking IRC channel because we would love to talk to you about setting up your own show on Air Mozilla. It's very easy, very straightforward. There's some free open source software you can use. You need a camera, a re reasonably decent internet connection. You don't have to talk like this. You don't have to have a green screen like what I've got back here. You don't have to. You can just like do it, like just hack silently or with some pumping royalty-free Creative Commons music going on in the background or something. Um, or you can uh, uh, or you can narrate, or you don't have to do video, or you can just do video, or who knows? It's up to you. It's your show. So if that interests you, come talk to me. Come talk to Richard in Live Hacking. We can set you up. We can hook you up and get some good content on the Live Hacking channel here on Air Mozilla. I want to thank you so much for watching episode 36 of The Joy of Coding. Let me just switch back to Wabam. Uh, I hope this was reasonably entertaining. I hope it was um, useful. You got to see me again do some more uh, mercurial gymnastics. You also got to see me fiddle around with trying to understand marionette, which I don't just yet. What I do know is that it doesn't have any of the same the niceness that we have with Mokitest browser stuff, um, which is a shame, and we should add that stuff. So maybe that's, that's coming. We'll see. Um, Okay, I think I'm going to call it. Thank you so much. Here we go! This is uh, playing all my ending sounds. Uh, thank you so much for watching episode 36 of The Joy of Coding. I will see you next week. Then the week after, I think I... I don't know if I'm going to be streaming. I'm in Orlando. There's a big 
uh, the, um, there's a big like cross Mozilla with like paid staff and certain key contributors are getting together in Orlando for a big meetup for a week. I may or may not stream that week. It depends. We will see. Um, I'm going to say probably not, but who knows? I'll let you know next week, hopefully. Um, so if episode 38 is missing or late or something, I'm giving you advance warning. It's It might be because I'm in Orlando. Uh, we'll see. Uh, okay, so ta-ta. I will see you next week. Bye.